welcome to the third lecture of trigonometric sketches so till now in the first two videos what have we studied we have discussed in detail the graph of y is equals to sin x how to sketch it and how to uh, do the relevant transformations on that particular graph what were the relevant transformations that were minus sin x sin x plus minus a constant stretching the graph along the y axis that is k sin x and change in the number of cycle in a limited period that is called change of period so that is about y is equals to sin 2x two cycles in 360 y is equals to sin 3x three cycles in 360 that was the gist of the first lecture and of course we combined the transformations in the second lecture we focused on cosine and whatever operations we performed on the graph of sin x we did the same thing for cosine x and then we tried out some questions exam type questions past paper questions related to sin and cos of course there was a more flavor added to it in the sense that there were questions in which a b c were unknown a could be the coefficient of sin x a uh, a could be the constant on the outside b could could be the coefficient of x c could be a constant being added to it so we did such questions what we are going to do in the third lecture today is that try out some more different kind of exam type questions and then get started with the third and the final sketch of trigonometry that is about tangent so now let's look at this question the function f is defined for x lying between 0 and pi now we all know that pi is 180 degrees therefore 2 pi is 360 degrees we should also remember that pi by 2 is 90 degrees pi by 4 is 45 degrees pi by 3 is 60 degrees pi by 6 is 30 degrees and of course in between values such as if we need to 5 times 30 is 5 times 5 pi by 6 that is 150 degrees or uh, 2 times 60 that is 2 times pi by 3 that is 120 degrees just to give you a brief idea from conversion into radians and degrees so first of all the function is defined for 0 till pi so the examiner is technically asking us to draw from 0 till 180 degrees and then what are they asking let me get all my markers of the same font size the amplitude and the period so fx is 3 cos 4x plus 5 uh if i'm asking about the maximum uh, sorry the amplitude so amplitude is 3 what would be the period the period the new period is 360 degrees divided by the coefficient of x that comes out to be 90 degrees and then it says the coordinates of the maximum minimum point of the curve y is equals to fx now let me ignore the coordinate word for right now if i just need the maximum value and the minimum value of fx how can i calculate i know that for any angle cosine x the maximum is 1 and the minimum is minus 1 that means if i need to calculate the maximum value 5 plus 3 times 1 cos x is replaced by 1 because that is the maximum value this comes out to be 8 and for the minimum 5 plus 3 times minus 1 that comes out to be 2 so the maximum value is 8 the minimum value is 2 now for what value of x will it occur because when this use the word coordinates that means i need the x coordinate as well as the y coordinate so the coordinates for maximum let's call it p comma 8 the x coordinate is unknown and the coordinate for minimum let's call it q comma so i need to find the value of p i need to find the value of q now let me first draw it 
on the next page so this time i know that if i ignore this thing for a second this range for a second let's ignore it and let's focus along the line cos 4x what does it mean the word cos 4x the expression cos 4x what it means is that <coughs> four cycles in 360 degrees am i right therefore one cycle in 90 degrees simple ratio proportion and this thing we already calculated on the previous page the new period is 90 degrees we all know that so that's not a big deal the big deal is if we want to sketch it between 0 and 180 so apply the ratio here that means in 180 degrees how many cycle you should draw you should draw two cycles go over it again the rule for cosine and the rule for sine is what remember this thing y is equals to sine kx y is equals to cos kx the rule is k cycles in 360 degrees where k is the coefficient of x since the coefficient of x is 4 4 cycles in 360 so i can go ahead and draw four cycles but the examiner is only asking me to draw till 180 so what's the use of uh, overworking can't i make a simple decision in the beginning four cycles in 360 therefore in 180 degrees there should be two cycle half and half 180 is half of 360 2 is half of 4 therefore what i'm supposed to do is that draw two cycles and this is how i'll draw it let me use a graph paper and a black line so that's a black line or a red line and here how it goes cos 4x with a 3 so this is 3 this is 90 this is this thing here um, somewhere here i hope i got it all correct so now that's the graph of cosine uh 3 cos 4x so this is 3 this is minus 3 this is 90 degree because remember one cycle in 90 so let me continue with this so therefore this is like this and like this i think i just uh, made it a bit wrong it's like 3 over here choose a thin marker this is 4 okay so this is 3 and then two units 90 and then two units down okay then two units here and then something here. now this is more realistic this is the graph of y is equal to cos 4x one cycle in 90 degrees maximum is 3 minimum is minus 3 i have not yet taken care of 5 let me add one more cycle so this is like this like this is coming in blue so you don't need to worry so much about the shape of the graph yes it should look like a curve but a little bit here and there that's not an issue so that's the graph of 3 cos 4x this much 
two cycles in 180. That's perfect. Now, what is left? Add five to each one of them. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This goes here. So this is eight. This one will be here. This one will be here. And this one will be here. And the minus three becomes a two. So the minus three becomes a two. The minus three becomes a two. I think that's it. So now the graph is something like this. And like this. Black. Something like this. So the purple and the black, that is the final graph. You can see that the minimum value is 2 and the maximum value is 8. Now, what is the coordinate of the maximum and the minimum points on the curve? So 0, 8, that is 1 maximum. 90 is pi by 2. And 180 is pi. So pi by 2, 8, that is the other point. And pi comma eight, that is the third point. These are all the maximum. What about the minimum? The minimum is this thing 45, that's pi by four. And the minimum is this thing is three pi by four. So therefore 45 comma two, that's one point. And three pi by four comma two, that's the other point. These are the coordinates of the minimum. So that's how this question is to be done. Okay. The question was worth six marks. That means in the exam shouldn't take more than nine minutes. And uh, since the explanation was going on uh, with the uh, working of the question, that's why maybe it took a minute or two more. But the clarity of concept is a must. Okay. Now look at this particular one. On the diagram above, sketch the graph y is equals to 1 plus 3 sine 2x. 0 till 180. Again, write the, down the same process. Sine 2x. That means 2 cycles in 360 degrees. But since they are asking only till 180, so therefore 180, I should draw one cycle. That was done. Now, for that three sine, one cycle and one eighty, have a cycle goes like this. Agree? So this should be zero and this should be one eighty. That means this should be ninety. This should be forty five. This should be two one forty. In forty five, mark a three, one point, two point, three point. 135, that's a minus 3, and that's this one. So the graph is something like this. It's easier to draw it dotted. This is the graph of 3 sine 2x, and if I add 1 to it, what will happen? 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All five points are raised up by one minute. Don't exceed the maximum value. Sorry. Still going down. Once you're about to reach the maximum or the minimum, start the curvature process. So the red one is the graph of y is equals to 1 plus 3 sine 2x. What is the maximum value? 4. What is the minimum value? Minus 2. What are the coordinates of maximum point? The coordinate is 45 comma 4. And the coordinate of the minimum point is 135 comma minus 2. Now this thing is done. Modulus. This was one transformation that we skipped in the beginning. What is modulus about? 
and uh, first of all this portion of the graph if i can just cut paste this I cut paste the whole thing hold for a second Okay, I hope it's built on the same scale as the other one. A little smaller. Okay, bear with it. I simply copy pasted it. Now it says modulus of the red one. So what should I do first? Let's get rid of the purple one. That's of no use to us. So this purple one is being erased like this. And then flip this one. This thing is up till here, is right? So the negative part becomes positive. Write down the number of solutions of the equation. Now, whenever it asks about the number of solution, what is the concept? This is related to O level maths, graphical solution of equation. This is your Y. Replace it. And what do you get? Y is equals to 1. So draw the line Y is equals to 1. At how many points it's cutting the graph? It's cutting the graph at 1 point, 2 point, 3 point, 4 point, and the last point, this one. So there are 5 points of intersection. 5 points of intersection means 5 solution of equation because if you were to solve it using simultaneous equation you will end up with five solutions so the examiner won't be asking us for the solution itself the examiner would be asking us for the number of solution the number of solution is technically the number of the intersecting point now unknown constants we did it yesterday now let's look at some questions related to simultaneous equations like this one. Again, the number of solutions. Now, if I want to explain the number of solution in a bit detail, this is something like this. If I draw the graph of y is equals to x, and if I draw the graph of something like this, so this is y is equals to x. This is x plus y is equals to 10. How many points of intersection will you see? You will see only one point of intersection. That means if I solve y is equals to x with x plus y equals to 10, there will be one point of intersection, which means there is one solution of this simultaneous equation. So that is the logic behind it. The logic can be further explained if I draw graph of something like y is equals to x squared. And y is equals to x y is equals to 2x y is equals to x squared if i solve it simultaneously x squared is equals to 2x x squared minus 2x equals to 0 you never divide unless there is a possibility of taking common remember the rule 
x, x minus 2 equals to 0. Therefore, x is 0, x is 2. That means there are two points of intersection. That means there are two solutions of equation. So look at this example, line with a line. Linear expression with linear expression. One solution, line with a quadratic curve. In this scenario, there are two solutions. But since you have done discriminant, you have done quadratics, you know that a line and a curve could be intersecting at two points, one point, zero point. What is the condition for two point? B square minus four AC is positive. What is the condition for one point? B square minus four AC is equal to zero. What is the condition for no points of intersection? The discriminant is negative. B square minus four AC is lesser than zero. Now let's move on to the trigonometry question. On the sketch, so, 0 till 2 pi, which is uh, 360 degrees. Sketch the graph of sine x minus cos x minus 1 and sine 2x. Now, whichever one you find difficult to draw, you can draw it first. Cos x minus 1. Now, let's first draw something on the side. Let's first draw just a rough sketch, what is cos x minus 1 would look like. So cos x would be like this. And minus 1 would take it one unit down. So approximately it would be like this. So that means this would be 0 and this would be minus 2. So now I got the idea. Let me go ahead and draw it directly. So this would be 0. One cycle in 360. So this is 0. This is this one and this is this. And it should pass through this. And it should pass through this. And it should look like a curve. That's the main thing. Something like this. So it's always advisable that you draw a rough sketch on the side. And if you think you can handle it in one step, then go ahead and handle it. And uh, able enough to handle it in one step. Sin 2x. What does sin 2x mean? Sin 2x means two cycles in 360 degrees. So let me just draw two cycles roughly. That's one cycle. And then the other cycle, one cycle, uh, two cycles in 360, therefore one cycle in 180, maximum is one, minimum is minus. So now let me draw it in red. One cycle in 180, therefore it would be like this. Okay, let me draw it dotted so that I have more control over it. Another cycle in green. Actually blue. Done. State the number of the solutions of the equation. Of course, whatever they will be asking about the number of solution, that will be in relation to what you have drawn. So don't worry about how they have rearranged it. Basically, this is simply cos x minus 1 is equals to sine 2. That means equal means simultaneous equation. Equal means graphically the number of points of intersection. How many points of intersection do you see? You see one point at the beginning. You see another point over here. You see another point over here. So therefore, there are three solutions of this particular equation. That's it. So simple if you want, if you actually know how to draw the graph. Okay, uh, more or less the same type of question. This time, they are asking us, state the period of sine 2x, which we will state in a short while. State the amplitude of 1 plus 2 cos 3x. These things are the easy part. Ignore it. On the axes below, draw sine 2x. Now, sine 2x between 0 and 180. So, sine 2x, what does it mean? 2 cycle n 
360 degrees. Therefore, in 180 degrees, I should draw only one cycle. So sine 2x, one cycle in 180. So I'm going to start with 0. And uh, 0, and then 90, and then 180, one cycle. That means this thing is 1, minus 1. Double check my working. The points that I've labeled. Think very slowly. Don't overthink. Don't underthink. Don't think in a haste. Okay, now it's going like this. This is half cycle. With the dots, I'm in more control. Okay, so that's a graph of y is equals to sine 2x, two cycles in 360, one cycle in 180. Done. What about 2 cos 3x? So for 2, ignore the 2, focus on the 3x. Cos 3x, that means 3 cycles in 360 degrees. Therefore, in 180 degrees, this is 1 and a half cycle. Okay, now that made it tricky. Let me move back and let's put one and a half second. That means one cycle in 120. So 120 is something like here. 90 plus 30 plus 15. So somewhere here is 120 degrees. Okay. Now 2 plus cos 3x. Oh, sorry, 2 cos 3x. That means Somewhere here is 60. That makes it more difficult. So this is two. One and a half cycle. Like this. Doesn't look like 60. Okay, let me draw this. And that's the best I can draw. I labeled 60 closer to 45. I labeled 120 closer to 135 because this is like 15 degrees, 15 degrees. Okay. This is one cycle and then half a cycle more. So this one is the graph of 2 cos 3x. Now let me shift it up by one unit. So if I shift it up by one unit, so this would be 3, and this would be minus 1, and this would be 3, and this would be minus 1. Okay. So now what my working would revolve around, that to just make it parallel, I cannot focus on every single step. Focus on every single dot in the graph. Of course, I have to focus on every single step. Okay, now I'm turning around the iPad. Okay, so that looks neat enough. And uh, let me erase the red one. Okay, and let me copy this one. Let me paste it over here. Okay, now this is three, right? Something like this. Fair enough. Okay, that's a neat one. Of course, you cannot do the copy pasting in the exam. I know that. So you have to think very, very carefully. What are the points of intersection? One point, two point, three point. So there are three points of intersection. That means there are three solutions. Of the situation. Uh, state the period of sine 2x, state the period of sine 2x, that's 180 degrees. State the amplitude of 1 plus 2 cos 3x, amplitude is 2, and rest of the thing I've already answered.
Okay. Let's move to tangent now. Y is equal to tangent X. Now let me thicken the marker. The graph, let me first draw a dotted line for season. And under dotted lines, but let me induce the grid. It's too small. This is better. Okay. In tangent, things are a bit different. This is zero. This is 90. This is 180. This is 270. And somewhere here is 360. So now this is the standard that I have to take. Now, first of all, I'm going to use the eraser and make these lines a bit dotted. Doesn't look nice. This is fine. Also over here. Now let me remove the grid. This. The rule is between 0 to 90, the graph goes like this. This is still 10. The graph goes like this. Between 90 and 180, the graph goes like this. between 180 and 270 it's like this and between 360 and 270 it's like this so the blue blue is one cycle it's a broken cycle y is equals to tangent x the period is 180 degrees 90 degrees tangent of 90 degrees is undefined that is why that is a red dotted line you can get close to the line but you cannot actually touch it tangent of 270 degrees is also infinity that's why we have these dotted lines and these dotted lines are called vertical asymptotes. We came across a vertical asymptote in the graph of ln x. I don't know if you remember it or not, but uh, if you study it, you will observe it. There was a horizontal dotted line in the graph of exponential. So in tangent, we draw two dotted lines, one at 90 degrees and one at 270 degrees. We should also know this for a fact that y is 6 is 45 degrees, y is tangent of 45, and that's a very common value, which is 1. When x is 145 degrees, y is 3, which is, that means if I want to label some points in the middle, so I can label 45 degrees and I can mark a dot here 
go left and this is 1. 90 and 180, this is 135. Mark a dot and then go left, this is minus 1. So these are the five major points I can, these are the two major points I can mark. I should just remember that this is not sine, this is not cos. The maximum value is infinity. The minimum value is infinity. So therefore, just remember this thing. In short, something like this. I'll draw it quickly. Again, without looking at the original graph, I'll draw like this. I'll draw a dotted line. I'll draw like this. As realistic as possible. Then the red one like this or purple is better. So this is two cycles in 360 degrees. So tangent, two cycles in 360 degrees. Now, let me erase this. If I want to draw the graph of y is equals to minus tangent x, what will happen? The positive will become the negative. The negative will become the positive. So let me draw it like this. It's too much like this. Tangents are difficult to draw, even for the teacher. And this is still 180 degrees. Continue the downward trend. Draw a dotted line. It's getting a bit crooked. And then continue it up. So this is the graph of y is equals to minus times. Let me see if I can straighten it out a bit. So this is a graph of y is equals to minus tan x. For example, if I'm supposed to draw the graph of y is equals to tangent x plus 1, that means I can draw it from 1. So therefore, the graph goes like this. Stops here. Then another one in blue. And then it goes like this. So therefore, at 45 degrees, what will happen? At 45 degrees, this value will now be 2. At 135 degrees, it should be 0. Let's double check using the calculation. y is equal to tangent 45 plus 1. Tangent 45 is 1 plus 1. y comes up to be 2. Uh, y is equals to tangent 135 plus 1. Tangent of 135 is minus 1. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Therefore, this point is 135 degrees. And this was 180. The 181 has risen up to 1. And the 135 was minus 1. It has risen up to 0. What about uh, y is equals to 2 tangent x? Or y is equals to of tangent x. Can you draw these? It would be the same as y is equal to tangent x except at 45 degrees it would become 2. At 135 degrees it would become minus 2 and so on. 45 degrees is the same thing as 225 degrees. 135 degrees is the same thing as 315 degrees. So that will continue. But overall, it's the same thing as 2 tangent x. Except wherever you mark 1 over here, that one would become k. Wherever you have marked minus 1, that would become minus k. y is equal to k tangent x. What about y is equal to Modulus of tangent x. That means the positive would remain as positive.
the negative would become positive like this and this positive remained as positive and the negative would become positive something like this so let me make join this thing so this is 360 degrees this is y is equals to modulus of tangent x now let's look at these examination type question for y is equals to tangent x the diagram shows part of the graph aha uh -huh. one thing i forgot what was that the tangent kx y is equal to tangent kx the rule is two k cycles in 360 degrees that means y is equal to tangent x k is one therefore two times one cycle in 360 degrees that's the original graph y is equals to tangent 2x k key value the value of k is 2 therefore 2 times 2 is 4 cycles in 360 y is equals to tangent 3x the value of k is 3 therefore 2 times 3 which is 6 cycles in 360 y is equals to tangent half x the value of k is half but 2 times half is 1 that is 1 cycle in 360 so now let me draw a few of them y is equal to tangent 2x and i am drawing it between 0 and 360 degrees so i'll write that there should be there should be 2 times 2 which is 4 cycles in 360 degrees so now let's draw four cycles make it smaller okay gee, this line is not correct let me draw it more realistic this is better one cycle this is the asymptote this one cycle is in orange other cycle in purple how many cycles are we supposed to draw four cycles so let us first draw four cycles and then we'll worry about the labeling part that's why we say that the rule in pure math for drawing a curve sketching a curve is first draw then label if you worry about the labeling in the beginning you won't be able to get the hang of it then it's bet better that you don't label it and you simply use the graph paper but if you are into sketching make sure to follow this rule first draw then label so these are four beautiful tangent curves they all are made in 360 degrees so label this as 360 therefore this is 180 therefore this is 270 and therefore this is 90 and the asymptotes are at which values asymptotes are at 45 asymptote is at 135 asymptote is at 225 and then it's 315 so that's how you draw a graph of y is equal to tangent 2x correct now therefore i can say that y is equals to tangent kx the new period that is 360 degrees divided by 2k because for sine and cos the rule was k cycles in 360 that's why you divide by k the rule in tangent is it's 2k cycles in 360 that is why you divide by 2k so therefore in the previous question when we have y is equals to tangent 2x the value of k is 2 therefore the new period is 360 degrees divided by 2 times 2 which is 360 over 4 which is 90 which is very very clear from the graph now some 
uh, people, they also raise this question. Can we write this thing as uh, K cycles in 180? Of course you can. But since the examiner has a rule of asking most of the questions for 360 degrees, that is why to align our thinking along the same pattern as that of sine and cos, we make this rule so that we feel a differentiation in that. Sine kx, k cycles in 360. Sine cos kx, k cycles in 360. But tangent kx, 2k cycles in 360 degrees. Now let's try out this question. The diagram shows part of the graph y is equals to a tangent bx plus c. Find the value of C and B and A, one mark for each. Now, the first thing that I observe is I should observe this is minus 90, this is plus 90. Uh, the difference, this is one cycle, correct? This orange graph is one cycle. Let me draw it in black. It's already drawn. Let me hide it. This is one cycle. So one cycle, the period is 180 degrees. Because the difference between 90 and minus 90 is pi. Pi by 2 minus minus pi by 2. That comes out to be pi. And isn't that the rule for an original tangent? That means the new period is 360 degrees divided by 2k. In this case, k is replaced with b. New period is 180 degrees. That is 360 degrees divided by 2b. Therefore, b comes out to be 1. So the coefficient of x is still 1. So that's the first thing I found out. Go through it again. What I did is that I focused on the graph. And I saw that this is the graph of tangent. Now, it may look a little bit weird to you. Reason being, we focused too much along the positive x-axis. The graph is like this. This is 0 till 90. Is there anyone stopping the graph from going back? No one is stopping the graph from going back. That means if I continue this graph, it would be like this. So this is minus 90 to 90. Okay, minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So therefore, the value of b is 1. You can write it as it is. You can show some calculation. That's entirely up to you. Now, that means the original graph could have been like this. That means this 0 became a 3. Therefore, the value of c is 3. The value of b is 1 because it has been risen up by 3 units. Now we know the value of b. Now we know the value of uh, c. How can I find a? I think the best thing is first write with whatever info you have. That is a tangent 1x plus 3. And plug in one of the point. The obvious point is pi by 4 comma 5. When x is pi by 4, y is 5. So 5 is equals to a tangent pi by 4 plus 3. We know that tangent of pi by 4 is 1. So therefore, 5 is equals to a times 1 plus 3. And therefore, a comes out to be 2. So the value of a is 2. The value of b is 1. The value of c is 3. Have a look at it again. I focused on the left hand side asymptote minus pi by 2, right hand side asymptote, which is pi by 2. The difference is pi. Pi is the same thing as 180 degrees. So, one cycle in 180, that is the standard for an original tangent function. So, applying the formula, new period is 360 degrees divided by 2k. I wrote the new period as 180. And instead of k, the examiner has used the alphabet, the letter b. So therefore, I find the value of b, which is 1. That's the first thing. Secondly, I can see that the graph has been lifted up in the air. The graph has been translated up. 
by how many units? By three units. So I write the value of C as, then I have B, then I have C, I rewrite it and I plug in this purple coordinate when X is pi by four, Y is pi. Simple calculation. Everyone should remember that tangent of 45 is one. If you can't remember, of course you can use a calculator. Therefore the value of A comes out to be two. So now one last question for today, that is this. The graph shows part of the graph, y is equals to p tangent p plus 3 tan 3x passing through the points such and such. Find the value of p and q. Now let me use a highlighter. This is one graph. Let me make it more thicker. This is one cycle. This is the other cycle. Now, if I focus, I don't know what are the corresponding points. I'm not sure about the labeling of this asymptote or this asymptote or this asymptote. I don't need to know. The reason being, this time I have the value of the coefficient of x. When we have tangent 3x, value of k is 3. If they ask me for the period, I'm assuming that if they would have asked me for the period, the new period would be 360 degrees divided by 3k. That would be 360 degrees divided by 3 into 3. And 360 divided by 9 is 40 degrees. That means tangent 3x 3k, uh, 2k cycles in 360 degrees. My bad, I just made a small mistake. That's not 3k, that's 2k. So this is 2k, the value of k is 3. That is 360 divided by 2 times 3. So therefore, 60 divided by, 360 divided by 6 is 60 degrees. So the period of this function is 60 degrees. Okay, now the thing is, uh, what else can I find? I can first plug in one of the point y is equals to p plus 3 tangent 3x. Can I plug in 0 and p? If I plug in 0 and p, nothing will happen. Tangent of 0 is 0, then p is equals to p. So this is useless to plug it in. Can I plug in q and 1? Let's see. If I plug in q and 1, so this is 1, this is p plus 3 tangent 3q. This is one equation. And if I plug in minus pi by 12 and minus 5, I think that will give me some inf information. y is equals to p plus 3 tangent 3x. When y is minus 5, p is p, 3 tangent 3 times minus pi by 12. That is tangent of minus pi by 4. So tangent of minus pi by 4 comes out to be minus 1. So minus 5 is p plus 3 times minus 1. Therefore, p comes out to be minus 2, which makes sense. Because p is this point. And you can see it for yourself that p is negative. So therefore, p comes out to be minus 2. What is the last part? The last part is solving for q. So now I have y is equals to minus 2 plus 3 tangent 3x and q comma 1. So q is the angle, correct? And y is 1. So this is 1 minus 2, 3 tangent uh, 3q. Therefore, minus 3 is equals to 3 tangent 3q. 1 is equals to tangent 3q. And that leads us to the, that will bring us to the next uh, level of trigonometry. That will be trigonometric equation. How would you solve a trigonometric equation, whether it's in the radian form or it's in the uh, degree form? So now if I recap what we have done today, is that, let me go back all the way. We started with the concept 
of uh, questions that involved a uh, maximum minimum value more questions on that what if there is a change of period and instead of the examiner asking us to draw in the usual zero till 360 the examiner changes that thing so we have to take care of the ratio so basically there are two things that the person has to take care of the candidate the student has to take care of for example in this question if it's uh, was asking for cos 4x so you should first think cos 4x 4 cycles in 360 then that's the standard but since the examiner is asking us to draw till 180 so you would only draw two sides so you have to take care of this and then uh, you have to draw certain graphs like this transformation was kind of tricky taking care of the modulus then questions regarding unknown constants that was explained in the last class then questions regarding simultaneous if you are drawing two graphs the number of intersecting points are the number of solution if they were to be solved algebraically that was the previous one was a line and a line one solution line and a curve two solutions in this example and then this these two graphs two trig graphs whatever are the points of intersection that is the number of solution and that is all what you have to worry about and then we started the tangent tangent is tricky believe me and uh, the period for tangent is 180 degrees at 90 degrees it's going till infinity at 270 degrees it's going till infinity two cycles in 360 minus tangent x reflection in x axis tangent x plus one the graph goes up one unit two tangent x or half tangent x basically the 45 degree value would change the 135 degree value would change modulus tangent x positive remains positive negative becomes positive tangent kx now the rule is different 2k cycles in 360 this is one example that we did tangent 2x four cycles in 360 four different colors are used orange purple blue and red since we have compressed four cycles in 360 of course the coordinates at which the asymptotes are drawn are also changed y is equals to tangent kx a new period is 360 degrees divided by 2k minus 90 to 90 this is a version of still the tangent x it's just that we went to the left of the y-axis then we did two examination questions in the first one by observation we realized that the period is 180 degrees and we calculated the value of b by observation we saw that the graph has been lifted up by three units so the value of c is three and how did you calculate A? A is no more the amplitude. A is no more the amplitude. So you plug in whatever info that you have and plug in a coordinate, you find the value of A. In this scenario, the period, I just calculated it for some extra information, that is 60 degrees. The first thing was calculation of uh, this value, this is C. How do you calculate it? You plug in the value, minus 5, okay, comma minus 5. And calculation of Q, we cannot do it right now because we have not studied the concept of trigonometric equation. And inshallah, that would be the next thing that we're going to get started with. Till then, take care.